There were the Sumerians, then the Akkadians followed by the Babylonians. Enuma Elish, the Babylonian version of the story of creation, is one of the oldest if not the oldest in the world. Similar to Genesis, it covers the birth of the gods and the creation of the universe and human beings. The words, Enuma Elish, which are the first two words of the epic mean simply, when on high. Some scholars claim that this epic is the Babylonian version of a much older Sumerian myth where the chief figure of the myth was Enlil, the Sumerian god of heaven. When Babylon conquered the rest of Mesopotamia and established the old Babylonian Empire around 1800 BCE, it became necessary to explain how the local god of Babylon, Marduk, had now become supreme among the gods. Therefore, the older Sumerian myth of creation was retold and Marduk was substituted for Enlil. In the Sumerian tablet called the Lost Book of Enki, Marduk is described as the first-born son of Enki and the first grandson of Alalu, the supreme god of the Nibirians who was deposed by the Anu through combat. Marduk made several attempts to claim kingship over Earth but was opposed by Enki's brother Enlil and his children. It was not until after the nuclear war in around 2000 BCE that he became victorious and was proclaimed the supreme god of Earth. There are seven tablets that comprise the epic. In some parts of the tablets, the characters are missing or unreadable which are noted by dots or parenthesis. Let's have a look at summary of the story. In the beginning, there was only indifferentiated water swirling in chaos. Out of this swirl, the waters are divided into sweet, fresh water, known as the god Apsu, and salty bitter water, the goddess Tiamat. Once differentiated, the union of these two entities gave birth to the younger gods. These young gods, however, were extremely loud, troubling the sleep of Apsu at night and distracting him from his work by day. Upon the advice of his vizier, Mamu, Apsu decides to kill the younger gods. Tiamat, hearing of their plan, warns her eldest son, Enki, sometimes Aea, and he puts Apsu to sleep and kills him. From Apsu's remains, Enki creates his home. Tiamat, once the supporter of the younger gods, now is enraged that they have killed her mate. She consults with the god, Quingu, who advises her to make war on the younger gods. Tiamat rewards Quingu with the Tablets of Destiny, which legitimize the rule of a god and control the fates, and he wears them proudly as a breastplate. With Quingu as her champion, Tiamat summons the forces of chaos and creates eleven horrible monsters to destroy her children. Ea, Enki, and the younger gods fight against Tiamat futilely until, from among them, emerges the champion Marduk who swears he will defeat Tiamat. Marduk defeats Quingu and kills Tiamat by shooting her with an arrow which splits her in two. From her eyes flow the waters of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Out of Tiamat's corpse, Marduk creates the heavens and the earth. He appoints gods to various duties and binds Tiamat's eleven creatures to his feet as trophies to much adulation from the other gods, before setting their images in his new home. He also takes the Tablets of Destiny from Quingu, thus legitimizing his reign. After the gods have finished praising him for his great victory and the art of his creation, Marduk consults with the god Ea, the god of wisdom, and decides to create human beings from the remains of whichever of the gods instigated Tiamat to war. Quingu is charged as guilty and killed and, from his blood, Ea creates Lulu, the first man, to be a helper to the gods in their eternal task of maintaining order and keeping chaos at bay. As the poem phrases it, Ea created mankind, on whom he imposed the service of the gods, and set the gods free. Following this, Marduk, arranged the organization of the netherworld, and distributed the gods to their appointed stations. The poem ends in Tablet 7 with a long praise of Marduk for his accomplishments. Now, let's start reading. Tablet 1. When the heavens above did not exist. And earth beneath had not come into being. There was Apsu, the first in order, their begetter. And Demiurge Tiamat, who gave birth to them all. They had mingled their waters together. Before Meadowland had coalesced and reedbed was to he found when not one of the gods had been formed, or had come into being, when no destinies had been decreed. The gods were created within them. Law, Mu and Law, Amu were formed and came into being, while they grew and increased in stature. 
Ansar and Kassar, who excelled them, were created. They prolonged their days, they multiplied their years. Anu, their son, could rival his father's. Anu, the son, equaled Ansar. And Anu begat Nudimud, his own equal. Nudimud was the champion among his fathers. Profoundly discerning, wise, of robust strength. Very much stronger than his father's begetter, Ansar. He had no rival among the gods, his brothers. The divine brothers came together. Their clamor got loud, throwing Tiamat into a turmoil. They jarred the nerves of Tiamat. And by their dancing they spread alarm in Andoruna. Apsu did not diminish their clamor. And Tiamat was silent when confronted with them. Their conduct was displeasing to her. Yet though their behavior was not good, she wished to spare them. Thereupon Apsu, the begetter of the great gods, called Mumu, his vizier, and addressed him. Vizier Mumu, who gratifies my pleasure. Come, let us go to Tiamat. They went and sat, facing Tiamat. As they conferred about the gods, their sons. Apsu opened his mouth. And addressed Tiamat. Their behavior has become displeasing to me. And I cannot rest in the daytime or sleep at night. I will destroy and break up their way of life. That silence may reign and we may sleep. When Tiamat heard this. She raged and cried out to her spouse. She cried in distress, fuming within herself. She grieved over the plotted evil. How can we destroy what we have given birth to? Though their behavior causes distress, let us tighten discipline graciously. Mumu spoke up with counsel for Apsu. As from, a rebellious vizier was the counsel of his Mumu. Destroy, my father, that lawless way of life. That you may rest in the daytime and sleep by night. Apsu was pleased with him, his face beamed. Because he had plotted evil against the gods, his sons. Mumu put his arms around Apsu's neck. He sat on his knees kissing him. What they plotted in their gathering. Was reported to the gods, their sons. The gods heard it and were frantic. They were overcome with silence and sat quietly. Aya, who excels in knowledge, the skilled and learned. Aya, who knows everything, perceived their tricks. He fashioned it and made it to be all-embracing. He executed it skillfully as supreme, his pure incantation. He recited it and set it on the waters. He poured sleep upon him as he was slumbering deeply. He put Apsu to slumber as he poured out sleep. And Mumu, the counselor, was breathless with agitation. He split, Apsu's, sinews, ripped off his crown. Carried away his aura and put it on himself. He bound Apsu and killed him. Mumu he confined and handled roughly. He set his dwelling upon Apsu. And laid hold on Mumu, keeping the nose rope in his hand. After Aya had bound and slain his enemies had achieved victory over his foes. He rested quietly in his chamber. He called it Apsu, whose shrines he appointed. Then he founded his living quarters within it. And Aya and Damkina, his wife, sat in splendor. In the chamber of the destinies, the room of the archetypes. The wisest of the wise, the sage of the gods, Biel was conceived. In Apsu was Marduk born. In pure Apsu was Marduk born. Aya his father begat him. Damkina his mother bore him. He sucked the breasts of goddesses. A nurse reared him and filled him with terror. His figure was well developed, the glance of his eyes was dazzling. His growth was manly, he was mighty from the beginning. Anu, his father's begetter, saw him. He exulted and smiled, his heart filled with joy. Anu rendered him perfect, his divinity was remarkable. And he became very lofty, excelling them in his attributes. His members were incomprehensibly wonderful. Incapable of being grasped with the mind, hard even to look on. Four were his eyes, four his ears. Flame shot forth as he moved his lips. His four ears grew large. And his eyes likewise took in everything. His figure was lofty and superior in comparison with the gods. His limbs were surpassing, his nature was superior. Mari Utu, Mari Utu. The sun, the sun god, the sun god of the gods. He was clothed with the aura of the ten gods, so exalted was his strength. 
the fifty dreads were loaded upon him. A new formed and gave birth to the four winds. He delivered them to him, my son, let them whirl. He formed dust and set a hurricane to drive it. He made a wave to bring consternation on Tiamat. Tiamat was confounded, day and night she was frantic. The gods took no rest, they. In their minds they plotted evil. And addressed their mother Tiamat. When Apsu, your spouse, was killed. You did not go at his side, but sat quietly. The four dreadful winds have been fashioned. To throw you into confusion, and we cannot sleep. You gave no thought to Apsu, your spouse. Nor to Mumu, who is a prisoner. Now you sit alone. Henceforth you will be in frantic consternation. And as for us, who cannot rest, you do not love us. Consider our burden, our eyes are hollow. Break the immovable yoke that we may sleep. Make battle, avenge them. Reduce to nothingness. Tiamat heard, the speech pleased her. She said, let us make demons, as you, have advised. The gods assembled within her. They conceived, evil, against the gods their begetters. They, and took the side of Tiamat. Fiercely plotting, unresting by night and day. Lusting for battle, raging, storming. They set up a host to bring about conflict. Mother H, Ubor, who forms everything. Supplied irresistible weapons, and gave birth to giant serpents. They had sharp teeth, they were merciless. With poison instead of blood she filled their bodies. She clothed the fearful monsters with dread. She loaded them with an aura and made them godlike. She said, let their onlooker feebly perish. May they constantly leap forward and never retire. She created the Hydra, the Dragon, the Hairy Hero. The Great Demon, the Savage Dog, and the Scorpion Man. Fierce Demons, the Fish Man, and the Bull Man. Carriers of merciless weapons, fearless in the face of battle. Her commands were tremendous, not to be resisted. Altogether she made eleven of that kind. Among the gods, her sons, whom she constituted her host. She exalted Chingu, and magnified him among them. The leadership of the army, the direction of the host. The bearing of weapons, campaigning, the mobilization of conflict. The chief executive power of battle, supreme command. She entrusted to him and set him on a throne. I have cast the spell for you and exalted you in the host of the gods. I have delivered to you the rule of all the gods. You are indeed exalted, my spouse, you are renowned. Let your commands prevail over all the Anunnaki. She gave him the tablet of destinies and fastened it to his breast. Saying, your order may not be changed. Let the utterance of your mouth be firm. After Chingu was elevated and had acquired the power of a new ship. He decreed the destinies for the gods, her sons. May the utterance of your mouth subdue the fire god. May your poison by its accumulation put down aggression.